Good morning, guys. How's everybody doing today on this beautiful Wednesday in Pennsylvania? It's 58, 55 degrees. It's sunny and blue skies. So I don't know about you, but I love these days. Uh, I mean, the green is growing rapidly, but that's not why we're here. We're here to share God's Word again in Philippians. We're in, going to be in Philippians chapter 3, uh, starting at verse 15. So uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you that we can do this. Lord, we do. We lift our country to you. Lord, we pray that you would help this, uh, Lord, our country, Lord, the United States of America, Lord, to get on our knees and to seek you through this um, pandemic, Lord. And, uh, Lord, we know, we trust you, we know you reign, uh, Lord, and uh, we pray that, uh, Lord, you could help us to be mindful, Lord, of how we could be glorifying you through these days. And we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mr. Weber, what happened to your beard? Oh, did you guys notice? <laughs> uh, I don't have the, I, I lost 10 pounds. Can you see? <laughs> and this. Okay, so I have been helping at the ambulance, on the ambulance, and to wear the face mask appropriately and to make it have a good seal, uh, I can't have a beard. So I had to shave my beard. And Mrs. Weber helped shave my head the other day. We sat out Let's and get a close up. hundreds and hundreds of birds were swarming around and collecting for their soft little nests uh, as a big pile of hair built up on the deck. Um, so yeah, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Okay, so last week we talked about discouragement and uh, looking just at pressing forward. What is it that we are pushing for? Uh, what is it we are striving to do? We talked about things like getting married and going to college and all of those uh, things that are great goals. We looked at Tychicus and Timothy and their great examples. And, but sometimes you can see someone and then feel like, man, I'm not good enough and I could never live up to that. Um, and then Paul showing um, how he had had all these great um, accomplishments, but really they were nothing um, compared to just following and, uh, the leading of Christ. So now we're into verse 15, um, but before we get into it, I just want to ask you, do you remember when you were younger, uh, a time that you had, uh, you wanted to be like someone. Maybe you dressed up, uh, you know, in, in my day, which I'm very, very, very old. Uh, you know, uh, young boys would, you know, want to be policemen or firemen, and we'd have little outfits, you know. Our parents would get us a hat and maybe, or a cowboy or something. Now I think sometimes you see we have the superheroes, right? Superman and... Uh, all the Marvel characters and maybe as, uh, um, you know, times when you were younger and you would dress up like that and you'd ask, who do you want to be when you grow up? Who do you want to be like? And uh, we would have someone. Or, or maybe it was your grandfather or your father. Uh, I also know that I can, um, any amount of time I spend with any of you, I can see, as I know some of your parents, I can see your parents, some of the influences they have in you. Um, so, we're in uh, Philippians, we're going to start at verse uh, 15 of chapter 3, remembering we left off last week with reaching forward, pressing towards that uh, goal, or that prize, and that is uh, through Christ Jesus. And in verse 15 it says, Let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. Now, in order to understand that a little bit better, let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Uh, and I think in verse 16 of Romans chapter 1, we see uh, real maturity in our faith. For Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Uh, so as we look at this and, and start in verse 15, I think we have to take pause for a minute and, and, and consider... Um, as when we looked at those superheroes or those people we wanted to be with, we weren't ashamed of that. Um, and so we have to consider, in order to be mature in Christ, are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I think sometimes if we take real stock, sometimes we are. And so um, to, to take this further, and before we go further, just consider, are you ashamed of that? And in a time right now when everything's going kind of crazy and haywire and our faith relies on, we're not afraid of death. We know that we have eternal life through Christ Jesus. 
uh, and here we are uh, looking at being mature. Now, I know, I'm sure some parents would say um, that, uh, you know, we're not mature, or you're not mature, but um, in your faith, are you mature? And it goes on to say, have this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it. It's interesting, Paul is absolutely trusting the Lord. He's encouraging them, he's saying to have this mind, the mind that he's been talking about, the mind of Christ, the example of Tychicus and Timothy and himself. Um, but he's not worried about the minor things. He's, he's saying, um, if you don't get it all right away, God will show it to you. God's, more, God's strong enough to handle that, and he, has, um, he trusts that the Lord will reveal that. And that's true in what we're doing. Nevertheless, to the, degree, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. In other words, let us have unity. And that unity is in Christ Jesus. Then it goes on in 17. Brethren, join in following my example. Note those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. So, we're going to learn a new word. Tupos, T-U-P-O-S. Tupos is the Greek word for pattern. Um, it means literally a stamp or a scar, um, an, an identification, but it also means to resemble something. Now, um, I love I love to joke, and if somebody says something to me, and I, you know, it might be questionable, I always say, "Wait a minute, I resemble that." Um, but in reality, do we resemble Christ? And that's what it's saying, this, this word, tupas. So I have a challenge for you um, to, to take, you can go in Blue Letter Bible, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but look that word up, it'll give you the Strong's number, um, and go through all of the Bible verses that use that word, resemble, uh, or, or example, or pattern, um, and see how it's used throughout the Bible. Uh, there's a couple of times it's, it was, it's used as I went through that, and I found it to be very interesting. Uh, so here we are for this pattern. Now, I've built a lot of homes in my life, and I learned very quickly, um, just in the, in the advent of building roof rafters, uh, angles and different uh, niches in them and things, uh, and you always would start, we would take and set the first rafter, and then we would make a pattern from that. Now what we found, and we always joked, is we would write on that. We would write pat or pattern. Sometimes people would joke and write chuck on it or something. But we would keep that same board, and we would always go back to that original board to make our template, to make the next piece. And if we ever, and I learned this the wrong way one time, if we ever just kept, we cut one, installed it, used the next one as the pattern, and then the next one as the pattern, and then the next one as the pattern, um, by the time we got to the end, the last board was nothing like the first board. So we have to have an original to keep patterning from. And that original and that grounding is Christ. Christ is our pattern. But as we look around and we look and we mark people in our lives, uh, maybe it's a brother or a sister in your home, maybe it's your mother or your father or a grandmother. I've heard lots of testimonies of people saying how important their grandmother was to them, uh, how she read to them and how she, she emulated or resembled uh, what a Christ-like living life is to someone. Um, and that's the idea here is to... Um, to, to join in following Paul's example. Paul is using himself. He, he knows them. He's intimate with them. He's been with them. He's spent a lot of time. They've seen him through adversity. It isn't just that he's a nice guy and he came through town, but they've seen Paul act in difficult situations. Uh, and Paul gave the glory to Christ in each time. Remember, Paul, when he was in prison um, in Philippi, he was singing hymns. And it wasn't he wasn't crying. He wasn't weeping. He wasn't you know, whining and complaining, but he was singing to the Lord. And through that, and one of these people that's reading this letter, remember, is, the, is probably the jailer who got saved through Paul's example. So, uh, let's go on, because I want to wrap it up with a couple of things. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross. And we have to be very careful, because it's very subtle. There are people, 
And Paul's saying that. There are people that are refuting or disputing what he's saying, and they're coming behind him, and they're teaching just slightly different. Um, but you keep doing slightly different, slightly different, and you end up with completely different. So, and, and notice this. Even weeping. We don't hear of Paul weeping at any time in Scripture except for those that are lost, those that are enemies of Jesus Christ. He was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he was, almost died several times, he was tied up in prison, and it wasn't, doesn't say Paul was weeping, he said he was joyful. Uh, whose end, talking of these guys, is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we so eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things for himself. Remember in chapter 1, in verse, uh, verse 6, I believe it was, um, where he said, all things worketh. Uh, let's look at it quickly. He says, uh, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And here he's talking about this, this same idea according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So, a word for you, tupos. And I want to look at a very practical example of that for you guys, and you'll appreciate this, because it's Paul's letter to Timothy. And it's 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, and it says, Let no one despise your youth. I'm talking to, to junior high, basically, here, maybe some senior high, and do, do you ever feel like an, an adult doesn't uh, respect you or doesn't think you're mature enough or that you're too young? you ever hear that, oh, you're too young, you don't understand? Well, he's saying, don't let them despise that. But, be an example, that same phrase, tupos, to the believers in word, okay, in your word, in the, in your, in the words that you use, in conduct, in how you live your life, in love, and in spirit, in faith and in purity, till I come. So, there's that word again, and he's challenging Timothy to be an example. So, wrapping it up, who is your pattern? Who do you look at? Who do you see Christ represented, or who lives a life for the Lord that you find attractive and you want to be like? And, an even scarier one, look around, who's looking at your life as a pattern? Who's looking at how you live your life, and who's most important to you? So, consider those two things, and I don't mean that to be in a discouragement, I mean that to be an encouragement, but you never know who's watching. Um, just like you're watching people, you never know who's watching you. So, two challenges, and it goes both directions here. You guys have a very real uh, a, a advantage to certain people that will listen to you, they'll watch you, maybe your little brothers or sisters, maybe classmates, maybe friends that you're um, hanging out with, and they're going to say, they know that you go to church, they know that you uh, proclaim to love the Lord, and they're going to look at you, especially now and everything that's going on, they're going to look at you and say, wait a minute, how come they're not upset? How come they're not scared? Um, so, Let's wrap that up. Tupos. Your challenge is to check that out. T-U-P-O-S. And it's just like typo. Uh, I think that's probably where we get the, the Greek word type. Uh, the type, you know, they would stamp it. They would imprint it. Um, so check that out. Um, look it up and see and check some other scriptures. Maybe uh, tomorrow night you can give me some examples or some, anything that maybe you read about uh, that you kind of helped you with looking at patterns. Uh, and then be praying for God to bring patterns into your life, people that you can pattern, that their standard is Christ. Remember, the pattern is one different, one step away from the original. In that example that I gave you of doing the roof, if I got two, three, four steps away from the original, it was different than that second one. So you want to look at people that are one step away from Christ, and you want to make sure that you're being a pattern that is one step away from Christ Jesus. 
Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word. Lord, we thank you for these practical examples, Lord, and uh, Lord, even, uh, Lord, the youth, Lord, you use. And I love that you challenged uh, Timothy through Paul not to let people despise your youth. Uh, Lord, and I pray for these kids, Lord, they are example to many, Lord. Lord, they can talk and share and reach and people will watch them that, that I have no ability to uh, even be around because uh, the way that you, the way that these things work. So we thank you, uh, Lord. I pray for these kids, Lord, that they would be great patterns, Lord, of you, Lord, that they would be reflecting, uh, Lord, your glory and your salvation and your love. And we thank you for these things and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. We miss you guys. See you soon.